Welcome back to People Analytics in Excel, Employee Attrition. So this is the third video in a series of videos that we're doing where we interpret the results of a logistic regression model that we built with the intent of identifying whether or not employees at a fictional firm are going to leave our company. So this we're finally getting down into the, the meat and potatoes of the question here, and we're going to interpret the core output of any regression model, which is the regression coefficients. So as you can see, here I am. I'm on the page that you come to automatically after you build a regression model. It has all my outputs. All right, so I'm in the top left corner. I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to hit the down arrow a couple times. And that's going to bring me down to my regression coefficients. All right, so you can see here on the left side, I have all of my variables. And here I have my coefficient B, or my, my betas, my estimated coefficients for each of my variables. All right, so this is what this means here. For every unit increase in age, we can expect a change in the log odds of attrition of negative 0.029486014. Now, if that meant nothing to you, that's totally understandable. Now, this gives us the change in log odds, all right? Now, to make this a little more understandable, we can exponentiate it, and now that takes away the logarithmic piece, and now we're just looking at the change in the odds. All right, so now let's talk about it again. Same output, but this time we've exponentiated it, so we've changed it. So now for every one unit increase in our variable, age, the odds of somebody leaving change by 0.97. Now let's think real quick about what odds mean, right? If I flip a fair coin, I'm going to get a head for every time I get a tails, right? So I, there's one-to-one -one odds that I'm going to get heads or tails because it's 50-50 chance, right? So my odds, if there's no change, is going to be one. Now, if I get fewer tail, or excuse me, fewer heads than tails, the odds are going to be less than one because I'm going to have fewer heads than tails. Tails will be a larger number in the denominator, so the value will be less than one. So that means that I'm less likely to get heads. If I get more heads and tails, the value will be greater than one. So I'm more likely to get heads, all right? So how that applies here when we look at these odds is this is the change in the odds of somebody leaving for every year that they get older, all right? So it's less than one. So what we see here is that the odds of an employee leaving the firm go down a little bit for every year that they get older. Now here's our 95% confidence interval, right? So what this basically tells us is that we can be 95% confident that for every one unit increase in our variable age, attrition, the odds of an employee attrition change from between 0.94 to 0.99, okay? Now, that makes sense. It's a little involved for me to explain that, uh, and it's not, super intuitive. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you a way to take these values right here and turn them into a basic statement where I can say something to the effect of for every year that my employee gets older, the odds of the probability of them leaving decreases between this percent and that percent. And we're 95% confident of that after taking all these other variables here into account. All right. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to come up here I'm in the top left corner. I'm going to hold down Control Shift. I'm going to hit the left, the right arrow twice, the down arrow twice. Now I've selected everything. I'm going to use Control C to copy. I'm going to come here to this blank spreadsheet that I'm planning to use to do this. I'm going to right click. I'm going to paste values. And I'm going to resize my columns here just to make everything a little easier to see. All right, now I want to convert all of these into percentages and also into text. Right now they're a number format. All right, so I want to convert them into text percentages so that I can then create a single statement using some basic functions in Excel that I can just read and it'll make sense to my, my audience. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple things first. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete intercept. That's very important to the regression model for adjusting the height of the regression line, but it's not important for us. It's not a a variable that we need to interpret. So I'm going to delete that just to get it out of the way. All right, now I'm going to select all of my P values. I'm going to come to home, conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, less than, and I'm going to say 
any p-value that's less than 0.05, which are our standard statistical significance level, should be green, because green is good and statistical significance is good, so I want these to be green. Okay, there we go. So now all of these that are green are my variables that are statistically significant. Now just because something isn't statistically significant doesn't mean it doesn't have practical significance, but for this exercise we're just going to look at our statistically significant variables. Alright, so now I'm going to come to data, filter, I'm going to hit my drop down arrow here on my p-value, I'm going to filter by color, I just want my green values and now all that I have remaining is just my statistically significant variables. Alright, now I don't need any of these for the remainder of this, so I'm just going to hide these four columns here, right click, hide, now they're all in here. If I want those back, I can drag across, right click, and I can hit unhide and they'll come back. But I don't want them, so I'm not going to do that. All right, now I need text percentage versions of these. All right, so I just want you to follow along. I'm not going to explain what I'm doing in any detail. Uh, but you can pause the video and copy what I'm doing. And what you'll see when you do it, if you do it on your own model, is that you're going to get the same results and you're going to end up with a basically a human readable result of this, of this model. All right. So let's define some column names. So this will be text estimate, text lower, text upper. I'll entitle this interpretation. I'm adjust these a little bit. All right. All right. So this is going to equal text function. my estimate minus one times 100 and then I want the text output to be two digits with a decimal and one more digit and I'm going to use ampersand quotation marks and percentage to add a percentage at the end of this number right so I hit enter now I can see that what this tells me is that for every year my employee gets older they're 2.9% less likely to leave. And now I can highlight that, grab my fill handle, I can drag it right and down. Excuse me, I can drag it right, I can fill all these, and I can grab it and drag it all the way down. And now I've got those same values for all of these. All right, so now what I basically have here is I also have my lower and my upper bounds. So now what I can say is for every year that my employee gets older, they are between negative they're between negative 5.4% and negative 0.3% is likely to leave. All right, so the likelihood, the probability that they're going to leave decreases somewhere in this range. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually write out the full statement that summarizes the results of my model. So I'm going to type equals, and it's going to go like this. For every one unit increase, some serious typos here, in my variable all other variables considered we are 95 percent confident that attrition changes from my lower estimate my upper estimate so for every one unit increase in age all other variables considered we are 95% confident that attrition changes from negative 5.4% to negative 0.3% right and now I can do this for all my other variables by simply double clicking the fill handle and now I have it for all of my variables I'm going to hide all these just to make it easier for us to talk about this real quick. All right, we're almost done here. One last thing I'd like to point out. Now, age, as we know from looking at our data when we created this model, is a series of integer values from 18 to 60. Uh, not all of our variables are like that. A lot of them are binary, right? They're either on or off. So male, for instance. If the employee is female, they get a zero for male because they're not male. If they are male, they get a one, right? So basically, what the, when this says for every one unit increase in male, what it's really saying is if the employee is male, all other variables considered, 
We're 95% confident the nutrition changes from 5.3 to 117.3%, right? So males are 5 to 117% at more likely to leave. Same thing for overtime. So one means if, if there's... If they're a zero, they don't work overtime. If they have a one, they do, right? So what this is really saying is if the employee works overtime, all other things considered, we're 95% confident the nutrition changes from 412 to 1,000%. That is a huge, huge increase in nutrition, right? This, And that's where this is extremely valuable. By allowing us to say this in a way that's easily understandable to people, we can spark conversations and we can enable our leaders with the kind of data-informed insights that enable them to make better decisions, right? Because what they're not going to walk away from your model with is any definitive ideas about how the odds of somebody leaving change. But what they can walk away from your brief with is knowing, all right, when people work overtime, they are four to ten times as likely to quit, 400 to a thousand percent more likely to quit, to quit, right? And that can drive really meaningful interventions and changes in the way things are done in your company. All right, so that concludes this video on how to interpret the coefficient results for a logistic regression. If you like what you've seen, please, by all means, click on the subscribe button at the bottom of this video. And until next time, happy learning.